Hello my friends and welcome back to our channel. Home is where our heart is. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world today. And thank you all for joining me on this incredibly fresh morning. The sun has just risen, the bird song has burst into life and I'm absolutely blessed to be spending my morning out collecting elderflowers and roses. We love to collect the elderflowers and roses each year because their scents and floral flavours are absolutely beautiful and we just can't bear to let them go. So what we're going to do is infuse them into a sweet sticky syrup so we can enjoy their floral flavours and scents all year long. So if you're interested then come for a little walk through the countryside with me and we'll quickly learn how to identify roses and elderflowers and then we'll take them home to Steli and she'll teach us how to make them into a sticky syrup. Now here we've come across one of Mother Nature's most marvellous creations, the rose, the beautiful rose flower. Now roses are super easy to identify. Firstly, to identify them we look at their flowers and this rose has five petals that are a pinkish shade of white. Now when it comes to the rose's flowers they can vary in many different shapes and sizes depending on what type of species they are. You get the more wild varieties which look like a more simple flower like these ones and then you get the ones with the many overlapping petals that we all know sold in the shops given as gifts on Valentine's Day and things like that. But when it comes to identifying roses we really don't have to worry that much because all roses are edible. We can use the wild roses or we can use the roses from your grandma's rose bush in the garden as long as she's not treated it with any chemicals. And another reason we don't have to worry too much when out foraging for roses is the only thing we're likely to mistake them for is a blackberry bush or a raspberry bush. So there's really not too many concerns when we're looking for these incredible flowers. Now the other way we can also tell we have a rose bush is by its leaves. Roses have oval shaped leaves with serrated edges and of course they have this classic thorny branch with their clinging claws. Now here we found the elder tree with its wonderful elder flowers that smell absolutely divine. This whole area I'm in now is absolutely covered in elder trees, potentially thousands of elder trees all along here and around. Ah, and they're filling the air with that beautiful elderflower perfume. Now that's the smell and flavour that we're looking to preserve. Now they say it's officially a summer's day when you can smell the elderflowers on the breeze. So for me today, ah, it's officially summer. Now to identify the elder tree is incredibly easy. The first thing we do is we look at its bark. When we look at the elder tree's bark, it's soft. It's like corky. When you squeeze it, it's almost squishy to the touch. And that's because elder trees grow incredibly fast. Then we look, of course, at its flowers. Is it covered in elder flowers? These are a creamy color. The smell of the incredible elder flower and they grow in umbels. This means like an umbrella. Then when we look at its leaves, its leaves off the branch grow on a little stem with five leaves. And these are kind of spearhead shaped, oval shaped with a pointed tip and serrated edges. <sighs> Mother nature truly does speak through every flower. So once you've been out basking in that ambiance of the beautiful countryside air, it's time to head home and cook these flowers into a sticky gooey syrup. And I'm home with Steli. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to make some delicious elderflower and rose syrup. The smell in this kitchen is amazing. Oh, it smells right amazing. Now. So Dane's been out and he's got us some lovely elderflowers, some lovely roses, 
Hope you didn't pinch any from anyone's gardens. Nope. <laughs> 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 this recipe is super easy peasy. Come with us and we'll show you how to make it. For this recipe, you're going to need 20 to 30 of these lovely elderflower umbels, a few nice roses, one kg of white sugar, a little squeeze of lemon, and some water. Step one, we're gonna take our elderflower umbel and we're gonna chop the flowers into the pan. Tip top tip, don't wash your elderflowers, so we're not gonna run these underwater because we wanna keep as much of the fragrant pollen as possible. Tip top tip number two, as you're cutting your flowers off, try and leave as much of the green stem behind. Don't worry too much about it, but that thick green stem, we don't want that bit. Tip top number three, Add some of your elderflowers to a cup. Add some hot water. And enjoy a fresh cup of elderflower tea. Add one litre of water to your elderflowers. Give them a little squish. Cover them in water. Pop on a lid or a plate and bring them to a simmer. Now it's simmering, keep your lid on and simmer for 15 minutes. Tip top tip number four, we're going to pop a little plate in the freezer and I'll show you what we do with it later on. Ooh. <laughs> Start to pluck your rose petals. Get them ready and pop them in a bowl. Such pretty colours. Now this has been simmering for 15 minutes. Wow, it smells amazing. Take your plate off or your lid. Get yourself a sieve and pop it over another pan. And then we're just going to strain the elderflower juice, wow, through the sieve, catching all the flowers as we go. And then, little trick, just give your flowers a squeeze and we'll get a bit more juice out. Lovely jumpy. Look at this elderflower juice. Wowzers. So we're gonna pop that back on the heat. And then bring it to a light simmer. Take in the fragrant smell of your roses. Amazing. We'll add our roses petals into the elderflower juice. Give it a little stir. And we're just going to cook the rose petals on a low heat until they lose all of their colour. Giving it a little stir as we go. Action. This has been simmering for about 10 minutes. Check out the colour change. So we've gone to this like amazing sunset ready pink colour. And we're gonna sieve out the flowers. So pour our juice. Now for a little magic trick. We've got this dark red, beautiful elderflower and rose juice here. And we're gonna add some citrus and lemon. 
give it a squeeze. Nice big squeeze. Stir it up. And the colour will slowly start to lighten. Pop your flower power juice back on the heat, bring it to a simmer, and then add one kg of white sugar. Give it a little stir up and we're going to let this simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. Always keep an eye on this guys because it's very hot sugar on your stove. You don't want it boiling over. This white stuff on the top is just cooked sugar and if we scrape it off and just get rid of it keeps our syrup looking lovely and clear. Don't have to get all of it, but just like the super thick bits. It's been simmering for 45 minutes and now we're going to do the cold plate test. So here's our plate from earlier from the freezer. We're just going to pop a little bit on. And the cold from the plate is going to help our syrup to thicken a little bit and we'll see how thick it is. Here we go. How much is it going to drip? Ooh. Just going to taste it because I can't wait. Ooh, it's so sticky. Wow, look at that. Gloop it. Okay. Quick taste test. Wowzers. I think it's ready. <laughs> so you be the judge of how thick you want your syrup. For me, it's definitely ready. So now it's time to pour into jars. Be careful because it's very hot and we want to pour it into room temperature jars. Not cold jars, not hot jars, just room temperature jars. Look at that beautiful rose and elderflower syrup. And one more for luck. Now we're going to leave these to cool. Once they're a little bit cool, we're going to put them in the fridge and let them cool further and they'll thicken as they cool. And there we have it. Ta da! Rose and elderflower syrup. Absolutely mm -mm. beautiful <laughs> colour there. Look at that. Amazingly, it tastes a bit like Turkish Delight. It tastes quite a lot like Turkish Delight, I'd say. I really like Turkish Delights and I really like elderflowers. Show them what it looks like with just elderflowers, Bjorn. You can make it with just elderflowers if you like. Look, that's what it looks like. Ooh, and bright that's yellow. that's delicious elderflower syrup. Yeah. But then when you add the rosies... Bright red. Yeah. There's a really big difference between the two. And we've got enough to jar up over there and give out with, as gifts. They make lovely presents. Loads of elderflowers and roses and syrups mm. and all that. Yeah, they make great presents and they last for over a year. Yeah, keep the lid on, nice nice sealed lid. Yeah. Particularly me. <laughs> <laughs> Check out this guy's glasses. <laughs> Taste test time. Taste test. <laughs> Thumbs up from Bjorni. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell it. I can smell roses. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Can I try some? Wow. It's so good. Oh, it's amazing. Give this a go at home, guys, <laughs> and definitely 
you'll be surprised at the amazing taste from the roses that comes through. It's oh. such a nice syrup. Yeah, it tastes amazing. As always, people, it's been a pleasure. Yes, uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, don't um, forget to do all the modern world things. Like, comment, subscribe. That really helps the YouTube channel. Ring the bell so you get notifications whenever we upload a video. Head over to our Facebook where we upload little things about what we're doing, what's yeah, going on. We dabble in Facebook and Instagram too, so follow us on there. And we always forget to say, share this video. If you liked it, share it so yeah. others can bask in its glory too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're more than happy for this recipe to be shared for all sorts of places, in yeah. forest schools and with your nanas. That's it. Share it around, share the knowledge, share the joy, and we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>